Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. So today's topic is mindset, and we're going to discuss dealing with negative self-talk. So this can take many forms in relation to the gym, and it could be either within a single workout, so I often have to work with clients who, um, when I'm teaching them new exercises, they continually doubt their ability in the moment to do the exercise correctly, and they end up overcorrecting things that don't even need correcting. So they'll think they're in good position, but then all of a sudden in their mind they think, well, there's no way I could be doing this right, so I must be leaning too far forward, maybe I need to lean back. They lean back, and that's definitely going to put them in the wrong position because they were in the right position in the first place. So then they're like, well, this doesn't feel right, I'm clearly getting it wrong, and then they lean very far forward, and now almost like too far forward, so they overcorrect, and then that doesn't feel right. So from that initial kind of negative self-belief, that negative self-talk, that negativity towards themselves of, oh, I could never be right, they're constantly pushing themselves into bad positions, and then they're actually causing themselves to never be right. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So this comes up in many ways. Like that's one way that I see it with clients. A lot of ways that I see it is negative self-talk towards their belief to be able to follow a nutrition or training plan. So, well, I can't follow this plan. You know, there's no way I can eat right. I've never eaten right in my entire life. Every time I've ever tried to plan, it failed. You know, so it's kind of that belief that if I've if I failed once, I will always fail. Therefore, in a sense, they believe they'll never succeed. So they might try a nutrition plan. They might try success. But if they work towards success by already believing it to be a failure, then it will become a failure. So a lot of times these negative self-talks that we have, these negative feelings that we have, like for example, competition anxiety. We've talked about that before in past podcasts where somebody is afraid they're not going to do well. They start acting nervously. They start doing things different in some way to compensate or address that fear. And by doing things different, they ensure that it doesn't work out the same as it always does because they do things differently. And when it doesn't work out the same, they think they fulfilled the prophecy that they were going to fail when it was actually their fear of failure that caused them to fail. So if they had simply just believed in themselves, done what they had always done, they would have been successful as they'd always been. So just today, I was talking with a client who's competing uh, tomorrow. And they asked about the use of caffeine. And typically in powerlifting meets where somebody has to lift a really heavy one rep max in front of judges, um, they have the competition has a squat first in front of the judges. Then like an hour or two later, you bench an hour or two later, you deadlift. So typically the squat, everybody's super duper ridiculously nervous because it's the first kind of judgment of the day. <laughs> so it's the first thing you're doing. It's kind of like when you first get out to publicly speak, you know, that first five minutes, you're having a heart, heart attack, cotton mouth, you know, you can't feel anything, you're going numb, and then all of a sudden you just kind of settle in and you start doing better. So the squats typically already have a ton of nervousness behind them. So the person was asking about the use of caffeine. And typically I tell clients not to use caffeine because they're already going to have a nervousness, anxiety type feel because of general negative, like general regular anxiety. And then you add caffeine, like jitteriness to that, and oh, it's usually a train wreck. The person usually over-exaggerates everything they do. They have a hard time kind of finding a calm balance in their techniques. They tend to do all techniques, all or nothing, and it doesn't seem to work very well. So I typically recommend that they wait to caffeine till their bench or deadlift later in the day. Now, this particular client said, well, I usually have about 100 milligrams or so of caffeine before I lift. And that's even on squat days. They said, "If I know you don't recommend to have caffeine, but do you think I can have this much? And my response to them was, yes, that's true that typically I don't recommend it. Because most often it doesn't work out well. But if you've been doing your heavy squats and training with 100 milligrams of caffeine in your system, and you feel that without that, you won't do well, then there's no need for us to cause a problem by doing something extra or something different or something new. 
if you've been squatting very successfully in training, you've been feeling kick-ass and super excited and having fun with 100 milligrams of caffeine, then go ahead and have 100 milligrams of caffeine. So their fear of failure may cause them to possibly do something different than their norm. And maybe by skipping caffeine, they're nervous about the skipping of the caffeine, believe that they won't be as strong, and then all of a sudden they won't squat their normal weight. Now, are they not as strong, you know, as they were four days prior? Absolutely, they're just as strong. You can't lose strength in four days. But their belief of that strength not being there may cause them to mess up. So their belief of failure may cause them to fail. So we said, leave the caffeine in. Don't do extra, please. <laughs> but leave the caffeine. If that's what you've been working off of and you feel excited and energetic by it, then go ahead and use it. It's a tool in your tool belt. Positivity for you. So when it comes to negative self-talk, we will often um, cause that negative fear to be fulfilled by doing something different, by um, kind of adjusting to the fear, by... Not only recognizing the fear, it's not negative to recognize fear, but it, it's not positive to act according to fear. So you can recognize it's there because it is an emotion. If you're happy, you know you're happy. If you're sad, you know you're sad. If you're anxious, you know you're anxious. You can't just say, well, I'm not nervous. I'm not nervous. I'm not nervous. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so recognize you're nervous, but then also recognize that nothing needs to be done about it. Do your normal stuff. Find comfort in if what you normally do feels good, then if you do the normal now, you will feel good now. So you can recognize that the feeling is there, but it doesn't mean you need to act upon it. So if we look at our common negative self-talk, often it comes from fears. It's derivative or brought forth by fears. So if we have the fear of failure, We'll talk ourselves out. We'll have negative self-talk towards even trying something. We won't even want to try it because we think we're going to fail at it. And we don't want to be seen as a failure, so we won't even try. And that's really sad because without trying, you can't succeed. You can never be successful if you don't first try. You will always be a failure if you don't try. The only way to do something is the doing of it. <laughs> so if you never try, if you never do, you can never succeed. And if you never do, you are always failing. So the fear of failure, like that type of negative self-talk, feeds itself. It actually makes it happen. Our fear of rejection. So I actually was this way kind of when I was younger, um, is I kind of don't really know why. I had a great childhood, had a lot of fun, tons of friends, even had a good time in high school. But when I went to college, I was kind of nervous. Like it was a new uh, world, new people. Um, and I was afraid, you know, what if they didn't like me? And I, I can't even say that it was necessarily like a cognitive thought of that. Like I wasn't sitting in my room going, what if they don't like me? It's just you have this anxiousness, this nervousness that you can't really maybe explain when around new people. And that caused me to often kind of like hold back on my true personality. I wasn't my usual self that my friends and family who I knew that they loved, that version of myself that they loved. So I became a person that maybe didn't have personality, a person that people wouldn't like. So out of fear of not wanting to be uh, rejected, I made myself into a person who would be easily rejected because there was no substance, there was no personality, there was no character. So I also would seclude myself from time to time. Maybe I wanted to go out and do something, but, you know, I kind of didn't know how it was going to go, kind of fearful of how it might be, you know, so I just kind of didn't go. And it's easier to not be, it's easy to not be rejected when you never put yourself into a position to be rejected. However, you are causing the sensation and the result of rejection by just believing yourself to be rejected and then acting as if you already are. So a lot of times these Fears feed themselves when we act upon fear. Whereas if I had been my normal, usual self, that in high school got me a lot of friends, yeah, I'm sure there was a couple people that didn't like me. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Jeez, man. But hey, I'm not everybody's uh, cup of tea or whatever the phrase actually would be. <laughs> so not everybody's going to like me. Uh, surprise, surprise. So um, I in high school, being myself, I had made many, many, many friends, maybe a couple people who thought I was annoying and they just kind of stayed away from me. 
if I had gone to college and been the exact same person. I would have made many, many, many friends and had a couple people who didn't like me and they stayed away from me. So I would have been rejected by few but accepted by many. However, the fear of rejection and then acting on that fear caused me to be rejected in a sense by all because I never put myself out there to be accepted. Just like the fear of failure is if we never put ourselves out there for the possibility of success, we will always be failure. Okay, we'll always be in a state of failure. So, if you act upon the fears you have, you actually feed them. And you cause them to happen. So, when you think of negative self-talk, and you think, oh, there's no way I could do this, there's no way I could be that, I'm, you know, dumb, I'm... Uh, like, you know, lazy, I'm undisciplined, I have no willpower, I, I can't be successful, I can't work that hard, I can't do that. So if you say that I can't blank with blank, and then you never work towards improving it, or addressing it, or doing it, you're never going to overcome that fear or that statement. So when I first started the business, I never had classes on accounting. I never had classes on how to balance a checkbook. I didn't know what the hell I was doing financially. I just took out some money and spent it on things that I hope was wise. <laughs> and, um, oh, thank God it worked. I can't believe it. Um, actually, today is the ninth year anniversary of the gym. Uh, but it has worked out well so far. But I always had that belief that I'm not good at money. I knew I didn't overspend money. I wasn't bad at how I handled money. I was just never good at tracking it. I was never good at kind of um, seeing the foresight of where it needed to go at what time. And it was always just complicated to me because when I first opened the business, I in a sense had negative money because it was a loan. So I never had money to allocate and spend this way and that way. I just tried never to spend money and I thought that was good uh, financial sense and that isn't always the case. So I believed myself not to be good about money. So therefore, anytime something challenging came up with money, I'm like, oh, I'm no good at this stuff. I'm just going to work around it or I'm going to find a way through it or I'm going to avoid it. Whereas I should have had the mindset that, man, here's this challenge of money. Here is an opportunity for me to get better. So if I have the negative self-talk of I am never good at blank, and when blank comes along, if I skirt around it, if I avoid it, if I kind of, you know, sheepishly shy away from it, then yes, I'm never going to be good at it. The only way to get good at something is to practice it. If I want to get good at the guitar, i got to practice the guitar. If I want to get good at squats, i got to practice squats. You have to practice your fears. You have to practice your failures. You have to practice the what-ifs. You have to practice the belief that you're not good at something. So what do you believe that you can't do? Practice the hell out of it. Okay? If you're afraid that you're going to suck at it, guess what? You already do. Whether you try it or not, you suck at it now because you've never tried it. So if I had the fear of never being good at the guitar, I'm a pretty shitty guitar player right now because I've never played the guitar. The only way to not be shitty at it would be to actually play it. The only way for me to be better at finances was to actually play finances. <laughs> so I went to a class called Financial Peace University, and I learned how to budget zero money. <laughs> <laughs> which was frustrating at the time, but looking back at it now, those were valuable lessons. So anytime I had a chance to talk to somebody about taxes, I talked to them. Anytime I had a chance to watch a YouTube video about business, um, you know, uh, purchasing, business financing, business money, I always listened to that. I always watched that. I bought, I bought audio books about it. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, by the way, was an awesome book that I loved. But I, I, I dove in. So the only way I'm going to be good at swimming is to dive in the pool. The only way I'm going to get good at finances is to dive into the finances. The only way you're going to get good at anything you want to do is to dive in. So if you're afraid of competition, go compete. Okay? If you're afraid of failing in a diet, just start the damn diet. You're already failing right now by not starting. You are where you would be if you failed right now. It won't get worse. It can only get better. If you've never tried it, you've officially failed it. And this is exactly where you'd be once you tried it and failed.
Now, people sometimes have the fear of, well, what if I then know that I can't? If I never try it, there's always the what if and the maybe that maybe I could have been good at it, but I just never tried it. And that maybe woulda, coulda, shouldas are going to be where you find your happiness. Is that really making you happy? Are you really happy thinking that you're an unknown, you know, undiscovered superstar at whatever it is that you're afraid to try? No, you're not happy. That's why you're having to make yourself talk about it. That's why you're trying to avoid it. You would be happier if you did it. You would be happier if you tried it. So when I first decided to open up the gym, I was only 27 years old. And I remember kind of like having that mindset of there would never be a better time to try it than now. If I'm afraid to fail it, okay, it's better to try it at 27 before I have a wife and kids. Before I have a family, before I have extra responsibilities above what I have now. Okay, so if I got a regular job and I worked that until I was 50, I would have always wondered what if I had ever opened in my own gym. Maybe I would have tried at 50, maybe I wouldn't have. Maybe I would have had too many financial responsibilities, too many what ifs, too many kind of things weighing on me to go out and try a risk like this. So I just tried it right away. I tried it now. And thank God it's worked out. <laughs> so it's only because of God it's worked out. But um, it was diving in. It was going after it. So trying actions towards it is what helps. So often our negative self-talk is built on what-ifs and magnifications of bullshit kind of small percentage possibilities. So if something has a 1% possibility to happen, we tend to think it's going to be the 100%. We almost think it's going to definitely happen. So the key to dealing with negative self-talk is to stick to facts. What's actually true? Okay? If you've never tried it, aren't you just as likely to be successful at it as you would be to fail at it? Where does anyone who has ever been good at it start? They all start where you are now. Everyone who's ever been good at something started without ever doing it before. They practiced, they got better. Maybe they got better faster than others. Maybe some people tried it and they failed and turned out it wasn't the best thing for them. Okay, maybe they found a different passion on the path to that first passion. But your life will not change if you don't put effort towards change. If you want something to improve, do efforts towards improvement. Yeah, it might not work, and you might be right where you are now. But you are here, right now, where you are now. Why not try for something different? So, stick to facts. What can you do? What can you do? What's true? So if you're fearful of something and it's only like a one out of a million chance, recognize that, that it's a one out of a million. Okay? It's probably not going to happen. If it does happen, well, that's shit luck anyhow, then. You probably couldn't have done anything about it. And stick to the present. If you failed in the past, recognize that that means that you are aware that that was failure. So, for example, if you tried a certain approach, you know that approach is no longer good. Okay? It didn't work. You are now smarter this time around. You at least know not to try that again. <laughs> So, past mistakes are lessons learned. You're actually smarter now. You are more well-equipped now than you have ever been. The more you fail, the more equipped you are to succeed. So, if you're having negative self-talk, stick to facts, stick to the present. Work towards developing a mindset of diving in and trying to prove yourself wrong. So if you don't think you're going to be successful, say, you know what, screw that. Screw you, negative voice. I'm going to be successful. So as I, uh, when I first started lifting weights, I was 16 years old, and I kind of didn't like the way I looked. I didn't like the way I was. When I was 15, I started doing push-ups and sit-ups every night as a form to change my physical self but also my mental self. I didn't like the fact that I was lazy. I didn't like the fact that I skirted around work. I didn't like to do things like exercise and made me feel, you know, fat and sweaty and miserable. And I was like, damn it, I don't like being this mentally weak. This is not how I want to live my life. Yeah, so I have that fat Rob voice 
Okay, that lazy Rob voice. Okay, that Rob that would have been if I wouldn't have tried. I have that voice. But screw that voice. Screw that Rob. Uh-uh, he ain't going to run the show. He's not in charge. Everything he says is bullshit. So whatever lazy Rob would do, I started doing the opposite. Whatever fat Rob did, I did the opposite. Whatever weak Rob did, I did the opposite. So I've said before in podcasts that I used to do bicep curls until I literally couldn't hold on to the bar. Because weak Rob would have set the bar down at rep 20. Weak Rob would have set the bar down at rep 30. Weak Rob would have set the bar down at 40. So I kept going until the bar physically, literally fell out of my hands. Because I could not hold it anymore. Because weak Rob would never have put in that level of work. And every time I put in that level of work, weak Rob died a little bit more. Every day I killed him off. And I created the Rob that I wanted to be. Who do you want to be? What version of yourself is waiting? The untapped potential is waiting inside of you. Waiting to be brought forth, developed, grown. Waiting to be given a breath of life. It's waiting inside of you. So start today. Start small. Start with small things. If you don't think you can be successful towards something big, don't do the big one yet. Start small. Aim low is another way of saying it. Don't aim at big lofty goals. Aim low. So in podcast 19, way the hell back in podcast 19, we talked about the the concept of aim low, brought forth by Jordan Peterson, who's a psychologist. And it's a great, great concept. Don't try to be successful at big things on the first day. Okay? You can't get a high school diploma the first day of kindergarten. (laughs) Okay? Okay? you got to take it in steps. you got to aim low. Be good at the almost meaningless things. Be good at the small things so you can then be good at the big things. It's only that we get to the top of a mountain by taking one step at a time. You can't stop, step from the bottom to the top in one go. It's step after step, slide, trip, fall, gather yourself, step after step, <laughs> slide, trip, Fall, gather yourself, step after step. It's over and over, proving yourself wrong, proving that negative self wrong every day. Take small steps, aim low, just get momentum. Build momentum towards something positive to then live in the positive. Okay? So go listen to podcast number 19, titled Mindset, Aim Low. It'll give you some ideas on how to start. Okay, build momentum. Prove your lazy self wrong every day. Prove that negative self wrong every day. Okay, you can even track your days of success. I do that on my phone. I have six goals that I track every day. And I track whether I do them every single day. Now, I don't get them right every day. I picked really hard freaking goals because I wanted big changes. I didn't want to see fluffy bullshit numbers that looked great and just made me feel good, but didn't change my life. I pick stuff that's hard. And I try every day to do it because if I try every day and I only miss one or two days of the week, that's still a pretty damn successful week. So I track it so I can see over time if I'm 90% successful, 80% successful, 70% successful. So you might feel like a total failure, but you look at your chart and you say, hey, you know what? I'm getting it right 50% of the time. I'm as successful as I am at failing. (laughs) Okay? Maybe I can get that 50 to 55%. Maybe I can get it to 60 So track your efforts. Start small. Do something every day. Okay? Climb the mountain one step at a time. You can be successful. You do not have to live in negative self-talk. Whatever you believe, whatever those negative voices are saying, okay, prove them wrong. Do something small every day. Don't act on the fear. Don't feed the fear. Do things of positivity and success. Cool. Okay. If you need any kind of motivation, if you need any kind of support, please reach out. Our email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. We will always be here to help. 
So if you're having negative self-talk on anything, whether it's body image, whether you think you'll be successful at nutrition or training plan, whether you think you'll be successful at a competition, anything at all that you're having negative self-talk on, send us an email to brutalironjim at gmail.com. Tell us what your worries are, and we'll help you out. Okay? Cool. If you like the podcast, please share it with family and friends. The more people we help, the happier the world will be. Also, if you like this information, you can find more from us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Brutal Iron Gym. And if you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions, we'd love to hear from you. The podcast is for you, so we want to know what you want to learn about. You can tell us at our email at BrutalIronGym at gmail.com. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening. And thank you for watching. <laughs>